Hi, this is Jack Cutter, and you're watching The Vocalist Magazine. My name is Jared, and I am here with Ja Kada. So, greetings, 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 my friends. So you are the king of reggae in Montreal. Tell me how you got started. Well, thank you very much first for having me. And, You're welcome. Um, give thanks and praise to be here today. Listen, um, first get started in the music business. It was... Like it was always in me from when I was a little boy in Jamaica and my mom was like really a singer, lover of music, dancer and everything. So I was like a perfect um, copycat of my mom, <laughs> you know, growing up in the country. So when I came here, um, growing up there, I was always dancing on uh, shows and winning basket of groceries and food and can't go to the shop because... They used to have jukebox in those shops, and all my mom friends they would see me and say, dance this song for me, and I would end up spending all day there dancing and achieving a lot of stuff. But coming here at the age of 14, I started um, going to high school, and you know, going to high school, we have high school dances and stuff in the communities, and, and then like, um, you know, we have a lot of Caribbeans and a lot of from different different Barbados, Trinidad, and Vincent, a lot of different um, culture there, and uh, I start to like show them like my heart, like yeah. what I'm, <clears throat> what I'm good at, you know. I always bring tape recorder to school, and and they 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 say no no tapes allowed in the school because I always have to have music. So you, were you selling them or no, you no, were no, just no, listening no, to them? I put like I what we did I record songs okay. and then that most of the guys in, in school not hearing or they're not familiar with and then I would just go there and play it for them and say this is the song what's really hot on the street oh, yeah. like out there in the community and so then sometimes we'd go in a corner and play and I would do a little show for them in school you know like that open the cafeteria okay. and sneak in and do a show. <laughs> so that, that's how that's how the performing started. That's how it started and now from it's evolved Jamaica. Big time. And then um, I come here and just start to unleash my uh, what I have in me from a, a young boy in Jamaica, 10, 9, 10, 11, growing up. And yeah, and then um, everybody said, wow, man, you, you have something special here. Even the English teacher, you know, said, wow, you're... You're different. I, uh, she uh, she asked she have me um, in my English class when it's over. Like this is like grade eight. She have me like in there like showing her to dance, okay. like, showing her to sing and do my moves and shit. <laughs> you know those things. So and then I have a lot of friends. Um, you know, like in school, a lot of people drawn to my excitement and to my you know music and yeah. And then I started. They started invite me to. House parties okay. and Sunday in the park and yeah. and blackout in the behind the schoolyards and I'll put on shows. So and, you're performing everywhere. Yeah, man, yeah. and they would tell people who I am. I'm, actually, I'm one of the first Caribbean reggae to say reggae singer that ever perform like in most venues in Montreal. Okay. That's not there no more. Okay. Most of them is not around no more. But yeah, and the first to perform like a Sunday in the park, so that local people who never see this style of um, singing before music, they saw me. Okay. So I was gonna say like uh, reggae isn't wasn't super popular in Montreal. So was it hard like getting no recognition? No man. Or? Reggae was, was like. Because you have Bob Marley, right? Mm -hmm. And he, who comes at the Montreal Forum. First time Bob Marley came, he came to the University of, of um, up, up on Queen Mary and uh, Cote Neige there, Yeah, French. the University of Montreal. Yeah, yeah, and then he was playing in the cafeteria. Okay. And then from there, uh, the next time he comes around, it was amazing because it was in the school, so every university, you know. So from there, it started. Then the next time he came around, it was like, at the Montreal Forum. Yeah. But I was, true, I love music so much, I go looking for a job in music. Okay. So my first little job was 
working in a record shop. Okay. Like behind the forum. Yeah. So um, I hired myself, you know. Okay. The guy said, yeah. how come you work in my shop? I said, well. You just I, started working? I see things here to do, man. Fix up the record, take up the stuff them and fit them up back. And he said, I never hire you. I said, I said don't worry, I hire myself because I love music. I'm from there, you know. There are lots of people see what I'm doing and fall into it and yeah okay cool cool so how do you find the reggae scene has evolved in Montreal over the course of your career well it was amazingly popular mm -hmm. like in the this you know 80s come up yeah all the way because you usually have so much live venue that uh, where we could have got up go and play and lots of bands can play and it, it invite a lot of more musicians to yeah like the live to music to was bigger then? Yeah, yeah, amazingly big. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. There was places, clubs to play live, lots of bands, lots of... So lots of musicians could have, like, they go and play and none of them form reggae groups and stuff. But since, like, after that, it's like the club, they're closing down and then everybody kind of... So reggae okay. was amazingly popular here. And, yeah, it, it was like... Cool runnings kind of life, you know. Everybody was like kind of laid back, chill, yeah. cool, relaxed, peace and one love kind of vibe. Was it? It was a lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. And then everybody was like more loving then, you know, more cooler then. Everybody was chill, just pure joy. But since, you know, and then, yeah, God reggae brings that, yeah. you know. So at that time it was like an hippie kind of thing, mm -hmm. and like lots of, lots of white rasta comes from all over. Quebec, Vermont, everywhere, man. When Bob Marley played at the Montreal Forum, and it's just to see that vibes. Yeah. You don't see that no more. No? No. Okay. You don't really see that no more because, I mean, all like, different type of music was always there, but yeah. you, you find uh, lots of different things comes into um, exception, where people accept and they drink and they smoke or they take, swallow. And then some people go fast, some people go speedy, it's chemicals, is burnt. It wasn't joint no more, it wasn't the weed no more, you know? Okay. people nice and relaxed. Okay, so reggae was, it was just chill, it was a fun time. Yes. And then man. people got a bit too hard? Because of things that comes into the, okay. the, the picture, into the mainstream, into people, and people, people accept and like. So it started to go faster, speedier, yeah. and things change. So when you say society changed and yeah. that led to the decline of reggae? Yeah, society changed. And people weren't into that and, chill vibe and anymore. And people wasn't into that chill vibe anymore. And then here comes technology where computerized music and they cut all the live bands and live music away from live, you know? Okay. Where people can come to the club this Thursday, Friday and see a different band, different... doesn't matter who, but it's playing good music to our spirit of people okay. and then <clears throat> yeah i see okay yeah. so you know i mean man I'm, I'm i'm here and i'm so happy to be alive and well still after all these years i okay. played most of the great reggae artists them and different singers around the world okay i opened for james brown before wow i opened for patty labelle i sing with richard Seguin. I, I sing with many, 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 many artists. Okay. I'm really happy. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you said reggae is a climb, but you, you still have a career. You're still uh, singing. Yeah, well, I'm happy to be singing still. Yeah, yeah. But it's not easy. No. Okay, it's, it's uh, a lot harder. You have to, like, really fight hard, hard, mm -hmm. hard to stay alive in this, in the business, okay. like any other business. But the music business... It's not as open and as freely accepted as before. Okay. You now they categorize everything and put stigma and hold back certain certain culture of event from happening and just hold back certain events. Because listen, man, I've been in this music business for la like over almost going on forty years. Okay. And I tour a lot yeah. in Canada, mm -hmm. everywhere I tour. I think I'm one of the most tourist reggae group uh, in this country. Okay. And this is like a fact. Yeah, I looked that no up. No matter where you go and check, 
Yeah. And it's only one time I ever get a grant from the government. Once. Really? Okay. You okay. know why? Because they don't really sponsor Caribbean to say citizens, Canadian citizens, Caribbean artists as much as any other else artists. Well, they favor French artists. Well, I realize that, but yeah. what they should do, you know how many tax I pay, bros? No. You know how many tour I made and gas and all these oh, yeah, sponsors yeah, yeah. and how many money, stuff? Yeah. And I and still don't acknowledge. Okay. And if they were like really willing and, and helpful in those, those regards, I've seen, you know, mm -hmm. that... No matter what color, the money comes from everybody. Yes. Hands, you know? Yeah. Hands to hands. So we are contribute, you know what I mean? And just help. Because it's there for us, you know? It's there to help. Okay. They have a big company who have billions of dollars. Why not help us who staying away from crime and violence and playing sweet, good music and uplifting people and making people feel good about themselves? Why? You know, why not? I mean, that's the government policy. So that's, you know what uh, I mean? No one knows. So uh, you have toured across Canada before. You start, you've done tons Canada of shows. Canada is my show. place. Yeah. <laughs> I love Canada. So what's it like doing a cross-Canadian tour? That's big. That's yes, a Yes, and big I'm deal. happy that it's a circuit. And if I get more support from the people who have the money and who can help all musicians, not okay. just reggae, but help us. Because we're... We're putting our two cents and our two wishing in it. We're putting our part in it because okay. we're not just going to earn like money because we don't make no money. No. No, we no, have you to have to sell t shirts, you yeah. have to sell CDs, poster, little pins, and those things to just to buy gas, heat, and keep going. Mm -hmm. Just to spread a name and to have like a name where, you know, your fans and people can look forward to seeing you. You know what I mean? And just buy your CD and listen to your songs and your messages and say, yeah, these guys are like really okay. good words, uplifting lyrics and... So you really, you, know? you do it for the fans, like you really like, that's your favorite part is... Yeah, yeah, I do it for the people, okay. my friend, yeah. Cool. Because without them, we're nothing. So yeah. it's them, you know, first. Okay. So I'm happy that I have fans right across Canada, everywhere, yeah. that really love Jack Cutter because you know what? I go there and I work for them. Okay. I don't just, I don't, we're, what, what is the money after? Because yeah. there's no money. No. <laughs> so we have to do it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's um, you know, like me um, traveling on west and doing all these circuits and those places. One of the worst split time for me is really to tour in the winter. Okay. Because uh, I've been through a lot. And that those roads, you know, in the yeah. winter, I almost died four times. So on the, on the roads out west, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you you like touring in the winter? No, sir. no. Okay, it's over. It's okay. That's it's now summer stuff. Just summer. Okay. Started in the spring. Like I have a tour coming up, like okay. right now. I'll be touring starting on the 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 twenty sixth. I mm -hmm. start. I have a big show in Old Z at the Ski okay, Resort yeah. Mountain, and then after that. I'm going west. Okay. So, you know, it's like just everything is like melting away now. It's yeah. finishing. Winter is one of the most treacherous times to tour for any group okay. across Canada. Just because of the, the conditions? How? Just because of the condition okay. of the, the road and stuff because the temperature change a lot there. Yeah. and uh, gets even it, colder than in Montreal. Yeah, you'll yeah. be driving on like, like just asphalt and then... Yeah. Five miles down the road, it's like black ice. Okay. So, you know, those are the things. But otherwise, in the summertime, it's amazing. Okay. Springtime, summertime, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have, like, when you perform, like, from videos I've seen, you have an extremely good stage presence, a lot, a lot of fun. Like, <laughs> where do you get that from? Is that is that an act or that's just really you? Act. An act? No, sir. Okay. No, no, no. no. You, when you really can't okay. act. Okay. You just you just being yourself. Okay, that's and that's, what I was and that's me. Because you know what my my inspiration and my all my soul and power and spirit is in yeah. me. Okay, it's from within me. So it's like some people have to take certain things to inspire them, their energy to go yeah. on stage and shit and drink some lots of booze and stuff. I don't need to do that. 
I already have that in me. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's like uh, in light fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry about that. Yeah, don't worry. So you recorded several albums right now. You recorded four in total. Yeah. Um, yes. And uh, how do you feel you have evolved musically since uh, the beginning? Very well, because um, you know I have, a, I have one of those great imagination mind and mm -hmm. can re recite and remember stuff. That's why I was like so great in composition and writing poems and good in Engli English class, you know, and literature and those things, writing a lot of rhymes. Yeah, okay. But uh, my teacher recognized that in me from an early age when I was in Jamaica, that you're good at drama, he said. You could hack, you know? Okay. But uh, writing, first when I start, like, start writing, it wasn't... <laughs> I didn't get this, the, the hang of it, you know? Okay. It was kind of different. But then I kind of realized that you have to write, like, what you see, you know? And how you feel about certain things. And it's not everything, but, you know, pick, out, pick and choose and, and sing from your heart, you know? And that's what I do, you know? That's... Most, most times, I don't, I don't mark, walk with a book and write lyrics okay. down, no. I don't write I don't write songs like that. It's all inspired. Okay. Most of my songs are is sing. It's sing through my mind and yeah. I heard the melody, I heard the words, and I just <coughs> play the beats and <coughs> just a, sing. That's a better way of doing it than yeah. just Wow. I, I inspire I feel everything that inspired through me. Music is like that because once I wrote like about I think eight hundred to 800, 400 songs in one folder and somebody steal it. Okay. Like people deliberately steal it because they, you know, they know when you rely on that. Yeah. And they steal your, your shit. You don't remember nothing. Okay. So what I did now, I said, you know what? I'm going to rely on my brain. Okay. <clears throat> and my memory. Yeah. And uh, uh, every day I get up with I can practice it more in my mm -hmm. in my mind and sing it out. You must have you must you must have backups of your files. Do you have or you have nothing? It's all backup. You mean with the beats and all that? Yeah. Like? Yeah. Well, okay. yes, I do. Yeah. yeah, but the the words the words are all in your mind. Okay. All in me. Okay. Cool. And um, what is uh, what are some of your future plans for your career? Well, the future plan that I have for my career right about now is to continue. Helping myself to okay. keep strong and keep healthy and uh, able to can perform for the people them that who knows of me, believe in me and come out to see me for my fans and my, my great friends and families. And uh, yeah, and to, to like able for everyone out there who is yearning Okay. To see one of the greatest entertainer that ever graced out of Montreal, Canada, mm -hmm. get a chance to see Jack Cutter live. Okay, cool. Because remember, if you're not a lover of reggae, once you're a lover of music, I shall make you happy. Okay. So you're since yeah you are so eccentric. Do you have any musical influences that? Uh... Great, great, great. No. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know who I love? I love um, <clears throat> um, Otis Wedding. Okay. Yeah. I love um, Jim Morrison. Yeah. Well, it's a marvelous night for the moon. Yeah. I love this guy's style. You know. Okay. It's a style, you know. The whole image. Too. Yeah, yeah, and but yeah, style of singing is a style. I like that. But mostly, my uh, my my people that have inspired me is like. The old, whole time singers them. Otis Wedding, Sam Cook, okay, and you know those guys. So these are like the older modern. guys, yes. And sir. you try and bring it to a more modern, <coughs> or do you have a more old style of music? Yeah. Would you say? Because how would you describe your music? Well, my music is a is a taste, a touch from all the, where I'm coming from, from the old days here, modernize it into like a new kind of kind of sound that drawn people towards good melodies and okay. good my music is like um, a, a taste of all the great 
the, the, all the greats them that ever graced the earth and sings and perform. I take a little piece from all of them that, and that's why I push my energy that way. Okay. The music is a medicine. Okay. To soothe the mind of the people. Okay. And kind of uh, when they're down, uplift them, you know. Yeah. Make them happy. Well, medicine, uh, yeah. music can be like medicine, definitely. But my music is like a pharmacy with good, good medicine. <laughs> <laughs> for the people yeah for so the people yes. what have been some of your over this career like because you've been around for 40 years now playing music what have been some of your favorite uh, moments like anything you'd like to mention in particular well one of my most happy moment is mm -hmm. like right here down here in Montreal downtown here in Montreal right yeah. like uh, I think over there uh, where we had the last the last um, jazz festival yeah that I played on like I had my own stage, right? Okay. And then um, <clears throat> at um, after Lionel Richie, I think, or yeah. George Benson finished singing, then um, everybody moves to my stage. Okay. So when I was performing, I get a chance to perform for ten thousand people. Oh. Okay. From my hometown. Yeah. And they 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 got to see me in one of the most highest energetic. Performances, performances yeah. of my my entire career here in Montreal. So like that, I'm 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 happy, and I'm happy that <coughs> excuse me <coughs> that I grew up here. Yeah. Um, where there's a lot of um, people here in Montreal and across Canada that knows Jack Cutter. Yeah. And uh, and and I'm and they all and I'm all cool with them. Yeah. And they're all cool with me. Mm -hmm. That means my name is good everywhere. You know what I mean? That's important. And uh, yeah, I go to school here. Yeah. Grew up here. Yeah, I'm happy just to be, yeah. What I really want though, I would like for maybe a government minister yeah. who is in charge of um, entertainment and. Who would recognize. Recognize the... what my achievement for all these yeah. years. And representing like uh, the English Canadian back trap artists yes. um, in this country <clears throat> to give us a break, give us some support, and uh, some some investor out there who knows good music, who yeah. knows good talent, don't just see us and walk by, just but take our acknowledgement. And support, invest some money, man. Yeah, because you, you find people take music for granted and just. Yes, they do. Yeah, because you get free music all the time now. Yeah, because uh, they just go on the internet. Even yeah. DJs, them now. Everybody run on the internet, mm -hmm. play from the computer, play from download. Yeah. Nobody see music like genuine, Wild. like, oh, let's go buy this collection. Let's go do this right now. Let's go do this. Okay. Nobody. No? No. So, do you think there's a possible a way of getting it back? Like, uh, oh, pour a glass of water. <laughs> do you think uh, there's a way that you, we could get it back to the old days where live music was a real like that was a thing to to be at? Is there any hope? Well, yes, there is. What what we need to do, or they need to do, is acknowledge that the music have to go back to its rightful form mm -hmm. and go back to where it all started from live music okay. and open the door again for live musicians so that they can start grace more musicians can start the kids can say hey, I want to play guitar I yeah. want to play bass and you have musicians coming from every walk so you know all over okay but when you just turn it down you turn their spirit down and turn them to the computer to just make music from computer yeah but it's okay to get one and two, but it, that's, that's not the right way, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not real recognition no, it's no if you get... No music, yeah. no realness, you understand? No. So Every, to, everything's uh, produced now yeah, like, on the computer. To get back to the normal form, we need them to start opening up clubs okay. that represent live musicians so that we can go again. Well, there are some venues in Montreal that some. have... Some, they use the right music. word, some. Yeah, not enough though? But not enough, because okay. uh, some, you know... They prefer a laptop. They yeah. prefer a, a stick with 800 songs than a, a real band. Yeah. 
We need to get by the light bands again, man. So what do you think of DJing then? That means like the, the EDM music. No, DJs is, yeah. is, can always do, you know. But because okay. you will always have the real and the unreal. Don't yeah. matter. Because some, some in their show, they're just pressing the button on yeah, their computer. Yeah. They're not even... Uh, you, will, you will find that because it's like fast food than soul food. Yeah. Home food, cooking than outside and it's fast food. And you will find the real and the unreal. And you, But the live music... Well, we just need venues to start see live music again. Yeah. The very and artists, and you are gonna see, man, the joy and <clears throat> all the town and the, the whole country is gonna be happy, happy again. Cause when you turn off live music, you turn off half of the city down. Okay. In darkness. Okay. I see. It does create for an environment of like friendship. Everyone's going out. You're not just sitting at home. Yeah, it's a good point. That was I like I like I like live music. Yeah, but uh, everybody's supposed to love live music. Maybe it's you it's don't underrated. Think, it's not as popular as people. That's, that's exactly. Yeah, because they they shift the thing okay. just to go to to machines, you know. But if they keep it. You know, machine. You have to have new creation stuff, yeah, right? It, but they do help. Do you, do you yeah, find like it has? It, there are some advantages of social media. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, of yeah. course, definitely. But the live music, man. Okay. That's the the light of the world. You turn off that. You turn off like you're turning off. You're dimming the, the the soul and the light of the world. Turning it off. So we, we, that's what I'm all about. Life. Music. It's, it's, it's not live music. No. Life. Okay, Li- life music. Yes, sir. Okay, not just live. Life, yeah. like real life. Yes, real life music. Because with life, you're bright. Yeah. You're living. You expect for anything, the goodness, any, any, all the best for things to come. Life. So okay. when we come on stage with live music, Everybody is up and ready and in such excitement, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the energy, that's the performance, it's everything. It's not yeah, yeah. Cool. I just did a show in um, Ottawa on Saturday. Yeah. Crowd was like um, from 25, 35, 25 up. Okay. To uh, like 70. Okay. Age. Okay. And trust me, it was amazing. It was, okay. Everybody was dancing and going sick. I'm telling you, man, you know, it's like that, so. What's the secret to these shows that you get everyone uh, going wild? First, you have to be coming from your inner part of you, inner you. Don't just come, um, I'm singing just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be coming wailing from your heart and soul, bro. Okay. And connect with the people first. Look them straight at them. No dark glasses. Okay, Look okay. Straight in their eyes, straight in their soul, and just sing for them, man. Okay. And that's what it, the connection is. Once you connect to their heart and soul, yeah. then, then you turn up you your... Them. Okay. Yeah, you turn up your performance now. More mm-hmm. energy from you now. And then everybody moving. Same thing as you. Yeah. Same thing as you. And then the whole place start going just full of energy. Yeah. That's my thing. Cool. cool. I don't need no substance for that. No, because well, yeah, I... The music... The music gets you. Gets yeah, yeah. I'm already have that yeah. inside of me burning. No, that's important. Yeah, man. Thank you very much for um, this. It's my pleasure to be here. Interview and life lesson. Yeah. On the importance of music. Yes, sir. Yeah, I really like the message you were uh, you were saying. I just need uh, I, all I I just need some uh, more uh, wider opportunity. Okay. Because uh, I get a lot. I get opportunity. Yeah. But there is I see chances. An opportunity where, where if I get that break to like, like just to expound to people from my myself, perform for them and let them see, they will say, "Wow, all these years this guy's here and what happened? How come he wasn't seeing him?" Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's uh, and then from there I can help my family, help myself, and help other musicians yeah. that coming up the ladder. Perfect. You know. Because no. this is not for me alone. It's, no, no, no. no it's if if you get it, it's like everyone, yeah, everyone. Everyone, yeah. Because me, I, I, I've been in the business. The whole industry needs help. It's yeah, just, yeah. And I carry a lot of musicians with me. Okay. I don't just, for me, I help a lot. Okay. With my help. 
come cool. forward with other athletes. Well, good luck with the, the career and the future goals and yeah, the, the dreams. God bless Perfect. you, man, and give thanks. Thank give thanks for having me. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Man.